Hello and welcome to the Friday, December 28th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One of the more common questions that we get when we are reporting about attacks and the like is always, well, how many people are actually affected by it? And usually it's, uh, well, really sort of a guess game as to how many people probably clicked on the link or received a particular email. In a recent case, however, that a user submitted to us, a phishing email, interestingly, did include a page counter. This page counter was public. It's usually intended to actually be displayed on the page itself. And uh, well, it shows that this particular phishing email did apparently convince almost 900 people to click on it. Now, we received a particular email on the 19th, the IP counter that kept track of visitors to the phishing page has a peak on the 20th. So just the day after the fish apparently was sent out, which makes a lot of sense with sort of a tail off over the next few days. Other than that, the email was actually not all that remarkable. It was a phishing attempt against a German bank. It did require quite a bit of personal detail from the victim. So not clear how many individuals actually fell for the full scam or just uh, clicked on the link out of curiosity. Now, most attacks these days, of course, do arrive as an email and rely on users clicking on an attachment or the like, but there are exceptions. And one such exception is a recent run of the JungleSec crypto ransomware. In this particular case, the ransomware is actually looking for unprotected IPMI interfaces. IPMI is uh, this interface that a lot of motherboards include, in particular on servers that allows you to reboot the server and also provides you typically with full console access to the server. In this case, the ransomware will gain access to IPMI using, well, just good old default passwords, no real exploit beyond this involved here. And then it will reboot the system in single user mode and then run its encryption software. Now this process does sound a little bit more manual than some other ransomware and other attacks. There isn't really much about it, how the attack works overall, other than that an attacker, for example, has to enter a password that is then being used to encrypt the files. Of course, this could be automated, uh, but at this point, that sort of part hasn't been really captured yet. At each one of the more recent Microsoft updates, I usually noted that there's a large number of vulnerabilities for the Chakra scripting engine. That's essentially the JavaScript engine that's, for example, driving also Microsoft Edge. Well, we do have a proof of concept exploit for one such recent vulnerability that was patched in December. That's CVE 2018-8629. Uh, this particular proof of concept does implement a remote code execution exploit for this vulnerability and Microsoft Edge. Now, the exploit is actually rather short, not really much to it. But then again, remember, this one has already been patched. So as long as you applied your December updates, you should be okay on this particular vulnerability. One attack I have been looking into a little bit lately are these sometimes called business email compromise or CEO attacks. The way these attacks usually work is that the attacker tries to convince some employee to transfer money or the like uh, to the attacker. Now, a recent version of this attack doesn't really go sort of for the wire transfer as some of the earlier attacks, but instead it just asks for gift cards. And that's of course something that in 
particular during the holidays is somewhat popular where someone may for example ask an accountant or something like this hey uh, I need to buy some gift cards or can you buy some gift cards for me and then the attacker will usually ask this accountant to buy the gift cards and then take pictures of the gift cards essentially the numbers on the gift cards and send them to the attacker. If you have received any emails like that, uh, I would love to see a copy of it. Currently working sort of on a little write up about these types of attacks. Well, uh, this is it for it today. And well, it's also the end of the year. Last podcast of 2018. I'll start up again on Tuesday because, well, uh, Monday is January 1st and a uh, holiday. And uh, for January, we'll also revive the Raspberry Pi contest. So if I make a mistake uh, during the podcast, uh, please send me an email. Use the contact form on the United Storm Center website. And of course, using the wrong year at the beginning of the podcast is certainly within scope. That's it. Uh, Thanks, everybody, and talk to you again next year. Bye.